in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and the music of Matty Malley. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Well, one day I left out a period, and 400 mail carriers walked around with bags that said, You mail. <laughs> well, you, you'll never make any money, Lou. Oh, yes, I will. I just sold, I just sold Tom Dewey 30,000 old Herbert Hoover campaign buttons. <laughs> what, what good will they do, Governor Dewey? Well, you see, they fashion just like safety pins, and he's going to give them to all the mothers for the baby. For a baby? Yeah. What good is that? Well, on the front is Dewey's slogan. It's time for a change. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm not going to bother with you from now on. Okay. Tomorrow I'm going to, to the beach and relax and forget about you. Well, I'll see you down there, Rabbit, because I am the new lifeguard. Oh, <laughs> lifeguard. Yeah. Why, you can't even die. Oh, yes, I can. I practiced this morning. I go way up on top of the pier and I put on my parachute and then I jumped off. I counted the ten and pulled the cord. What happened? My trunk fell off. I... <laughs> you mean you're in the water with no trunks on? Mm -hmm. what, what did you do? I had to spend the whole day running in and out with the tide. <laughs> boys get any further involved in nonsense, here's a thought that makes good sense. Before Lou Costello became a lifeguard, he almost drowned in water that only came up to his knees. Of course, his head was stuck in the mud. Now, don't you be a stick in the mud, about entertainment, that is. On Wednesday night, just listen to the lively shows offered you on ABC from early to late. For example, look at the entertainment still on tap for your listening pleasure tonight. There are lots more laughs coming up with Bud and Lou... Then our fabulous new quiz show, Go for the House, follows over most of these ABC stations. After Go for the House, be sure to hear the great Bing Crosby show. Bing's guest star will be vivacious musical comedy queen, Ethel Merman. And together they'll bring you the latest edition of the Crosby Flop Parade. Following Bing, listen to the Star Theater. Yes, for wonderful entertainment, stay tuned to ABC tonight. And now, back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Right here on the blanket. DSC. Distinguished. Ooh. Distinguished Service Cross. You yeah. idiot. That means the Department of Street Cleaners. <laughs> you mean that fellow in the white suit with the street cleaner? Certainly. No wonder he gave me the brush. <laughs> That's all you've got to cut out this nonsense. Last week you bought a dog. This week you buy a horse. The next thing, the next thing I know, you'll be buying an elephant. I did. I bought an elephant. Look, but I had to give him back. She's the sweetest horse I've ever met. Come here, Tina Porter. <laughs> That's a nice girl. Give Abbott a great big kiss. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> sure cools you off, don't it? <laughs> Castello, take that horse outside and turn him loose. Oh, yes, turn him loose. Look, Abbott, I can't do that. Peanut butter is hungry. i got to feed him. What does the horse eat, what does the horse eat Abbott? The horse eats his father. He eats his father? <laughs> Certainly. That's fine. What does the horse's father eat? He eats his father. He eats his father? Well, what do you know? And what does the horse's mother eat? She eats her father. What are they, a bunch of cannibals? Certainly <laughs> not. Every horse has to eat its father. Oh, I see. He eats his father, then his father eats his father, and then his mother eats her father. And the next thing you know, there won't be no fathers left for Father's Day. <laughs> Now, now, you dummy. To feed a horse, you take a bag and put his fodder in it. You put his fodder in a bag? That's right. Then you hang his fodder on his nose. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? A horse walking around with his fodder hanging on his nose. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see you with your old man hanging on yours. Will you talk sense? And you got the nose to hang on. All right, all right. Never mind that. Look, let's talk sense. If you intend to keep that horse around here, you'll, you'll have to take care of him yourself. Now, you're going to be the horse's groom. Okay. I'll... I'll be the horse's what? His groom. You said you love the horse, didn't you? Certainly, I love him, but I don't want to marry him. Now, look, Costello, when I say groom, I mean you have to curry the horse. Why should I curry him? He's big enough to walk. <laughs> look, Abbott, I'm going to take Peanut Butter off to Hollywood Park, and I'm going to enter him in the race. Well, the track is pretty muddy. Uh, yeah. Do you think he'll be able to race? Uh, what is he, a mutter? <laughs> a what? I said, is he a mutter? How can a he be a mutter? Ain't a she always a mother? Well, certainly not. Sometimes a he makes a better mother than a she. <laughs> Look, Abbott, suppose a mama horse has little horses. Don't that make her a mother? That depends on her feet. <laughs> we learn something new every day, don't we? That's a mother's a horse that likes to run in the mud. On account of having tall feet. Well, in that case, I guess Peanut Butter's a mother because I saw him limping on his two front feet. Oh, I see. He's having trouble with his forelegs. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> I said he's having trouble with his forelegs. He's having trouble with his forelegs? I just told you, he only limps with his two front legs. Costello, your horse's forelegs are in front. His forelegs are in front? Yes. What are those things in the back, crutches? Man, <laughs> your horse has four legs in front and hind legs in back. Four legs in front and hind legs in back. That's right. What I got, a centipede? <laughs> Look, Costello, uh, your horse has only four legs. I know, but he only races on three of them. What does he do with the other leg? He trips the other horse. Uh, <laughs> Costello, that broken down horse doesn't belong on a racetrack. <laughs> Who would ever bet on a nag like that? I would. I'm going to take all the money out of my piggy bank. I'm even going to sell my erector set and my ping pong paddle. And I'm going to bet every cent of my money on my horse. Oh, that's ridiculous, Costello. Putting all your money on a horse. Big gamblers don't do that. Oh, no? Well, the biggest gambler that ever lived did it. And just who was the biggest gambler that ever lived? Lady Godiva. <laughs> Lady Godiva was a gambler? She put everything she had on a horse. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Castell. Now get this horse out of the studio at once. Okay. Peanut butter. We have to go home now. <laughs> well, he's gone. How do you like that? He put on a blanket and he's back again. Abbott, don't look now, but that's your wife. I... <laughs> Marty Abbott, how dare you call me a horse? Yes, Abbott. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your wife doesn't look like a horse. Thank you, Costello. Her ears are too long. I... <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Honey, I apologize. To me, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. Well, thanks. That's more like my buddy. Remember you once said, I have a face that launched a thousand ships. How did they launch them? Fly them down that big nose? Why, you walking windbag, I Ah, uh, hold on, honey. Now, look, Costello doesn't mean what he says. He's been through a lot, and his brain is too tense. What do you mean, my brain is too tense? It's too tense the size of a normal brain. 
I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't have said that, Mrs. Abbott, because I was out. I was going out of my way to get you a beautiful present, and here it is. Well, my, it looks like a pair of nylon stockings. Well, I couldn't get nylon stockings in your size, but these are just as sheer and quite as strong, and they'll fit your legs perfect. Well, what are they? Salami cases. <laughs> Goodbye. That fellow, I can't understand you. You do everything wrong. You insulted my wife. You brought a racehorse into the studio. Tell me, do idiots run in your family? Oh, no. They all drive their own cars. <laughs> well, I'm getting out of here, Rabbit. I gotta go over to the racetrack and end up peanut butter in a handicap. Hey, you idiot. That horse hasn't got a chance. Oh, no? I've seen him run, and he runs rings around the other horses. Where did you see him run rings around the other horses? On a merry-go-round. I... <laughs> I'm going to enter him in a big race next fall. It's a new kind of race, and there's a lot of money in it. All the money goes to the first horse. And what race is that? The Frankfurter Handicap. Frankfurter Handicap? Yeah, wiener take all. I... <laughs> Hello, boys. Well, well, it's Susan Miller. Well, Susan, I've got news for you. Costello just bought a race horse. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, just think of it. Soon you'll be seeing my name on a sporting page of the paper. Louis S. Costello, turf king. Louis S. Costello? Mm -hmm. What does the S stand for? Nothing. My father dropped a piece of spaghetti on my birth certificate. <laughs> well, Costello, now that you're a big uh, race horse owner, you should dress the part. Yes, you should wear sport clothes. Oh, I got plenty of sport clothes. Do you have gabardine? Oh, yes. Do you have cashmere? Uh huh. Do you have twills? Do I have what? Do you have twills? You know I have twills. Every time you kiss me, I have twills. <laughs> I'm talking about clothes. If you want to know the proper kind of clothes to wear, you should look in Esquire and see what the men are wearing. There's a sweet fat time. I should look in Esquire to see what the men are wearing. That's like going to a burlesque show and watching the uses. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. This is right. Esquire tells you what to wear. It gives you the proper color combination. Oh, yes, I saw that. A guy with gray eyes is supposed to wear a gray hat. If he's got blue eyes, he's supposed to wear a blue hat. And if he has brown eyes, a brown hat. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Gisela, you're going to look awfully funny walking down the street in the bloodshot derby. <laughs> so long, Fatso. Now, look at that, but these interruptions are getting me no place. Now, I've got to get over to the racetrack and get my horse, Peanut Butter, ready for the race. Now, wait a minute. What, what's that you've got under your arm? A special saddle I made for Peanut Butter out of one of my mother's old girdles. Oh, now, what good is a saddle that's made out of a lady's girdle? Well, with this on, if he gets in a tight spot, he can always come from behind and let himself out in a stretch. <laughs> Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this. Here's the hot tip we got right from the horse's mouth, Lou Costello's horse. If you want a good entertainment set, stick to ABC Wednesday night. Now, there's the horse that makes sense. He knows you'll go for the fun on Go for the House, which follows Abbott and Costello over most of these ABC stations. Fun and hearing contestants try for a beautiful honeymoon house. And since he's a horse... He should know about Bing Crosby, whose great show is on the air tonight at 9. After you've listened to Bing and his special guest, Ethel Merman, stay tuned for the scintillating melody of the Star Theater, featuring singers Gordon McRae and lovely Evelyn Knight, and the sparkling music of Victor Young's orchestra. Remember, still to be heard tonight are Go for the House, Bing Crosby, and the Star Theater. Yes, even horses talk about the outstanding entertainment people enjoy every Wednesday night on ABC... And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. I Get a Kick Out of You is the choice of our singing star, Susan Miller, as she joins Matty Malnick and his orchestra. Get no kick from champagne. Mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true? Shall I get a kick out of you? Some 
like that perfume from Spain. I'm sure that if I could be even one with that was born to Would I get a kiss out of you? I get a kiss every time I see us standing there before. I get a kiss, so it's clear to see you out door to door. I get no kiss in a place. I am too high with some guy. Come on, Costello. Here we are at Hollywood Park Racetrack. Now, we've got to see one of the officials and register your horse. Why should I register him? He's too young to vote. No, no, no. no. You tell me, in order to enter your horse in the race, you've got to show his pedigree. Well, I... Mm, what'd you say? You've got to show his pedigree. I can't have it. Why not? He's too bashful. I... <laughs> no, 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 you dummy. I'm talking about his pedigree. Who was he fooled by? He wasn't fooled by anybody. He's a very smart horse. <laughs> no, 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 Costello. You gotta tell him all about your horse, his age, his weight, and your horse's height. You know your horse's height? Oh, I know him very well. He's just a friend of mine. Who's a friend of yours? Horse's height, the band leader. I. <laughs> I ran around with his brother. Cause that's height. Cause that's... <laughs> Cut out this nonsense. You've got to get a jockey, you know, to ride your horse. Ah, but I'm going to ride peanut butter myself. You dope. You never rode a horse in your life. I just saw. I rode a horse once when I was out west. What kind of horse did you ride? Did you ride a Mustang? Well, I used to have a Mustang, but I shaved it off. I... <laughs> Made my girl jealous. It was bigger than hers. <laughs> I'm talking about a Mustang, not a mustache. You ride on a Mustang, but you can't ride on a mustache. Well, you could ride on mine. It had handlebars. <laughs> Costello, I don't believe you can ride at all. Oh, I can. Can you make a horse do a canter? Yes. I make him do a jolting, too. He gets down on one knee and he sings many. Many. Costello, are you trying to tell me that your horse sang Mammy? Oh, sure, sure. Not all the way through. He whistled the last chorus. Costello, that's impossible. How can a horse whistle? I put my fingers in his mouth. <laughs> Look, never mind that. What about your horse's feet? Did you feed them today? Well, this morning I gave him a bucket, a bucket of whiskey. You gave the horse a buck? A bucket of whiskey? Yeah, because I felt sorry for him. The man that told me, he told me, he says that he's got to go back on the wagon tomorrow. <laughs> Costello, you better get over to the stable right away. The first race starts in five minutes. <laughs> Who told you that? The tax vegetarian. You dope that veterinarian. Veterinarian. That's what my brother is. Your brother's a horse doctor? He's a veterinarian. A veterinarian of World War II. <laughs> <laughs> what did the doctor say was wrong with your horse? <laughs> I think he's got bugs. The doctor said he had the cricket. He didn't say cricket. He said your horse had rickets. Rickets? That's what my Uncle Mike drinks every night. Your uncle... Your uncle drinks rickets? Low gin rickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Costello, here comes the doctor now. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Dr. Melonhead, the racetrack veterinarian. Well, I'm glad... To, I'm glad to meet you, doctor. <laughs> Is it true that... 
Is it true that Costello's horse can't run this afternoon? Yes, it is true. Costello's horse is the most peculiar horse I ever examined. Costello, it's obvious that your horse is suffering from double endocardomy. What did you say? I said double endocardomy. Too hot. Too hot? Three things. I passed. <laughs> Sensible, Costello. You'll have to go to the drugstore, get this prescription filled. Here, take out a pencil. Got it? Now write this down. Now, dear druggist. Uh, dear druggist. Give Mr. Costello 40 milligrams of salinated sodium tartrate, diluted in specific to treat itself in my solution, combined with super hard middle to salicylic acid. Have you got that down? All but one part. <laughs> what part is that? The part that comes after dear druggist. <laughs> well, I've got to be going, gentlemen. Well, I've got to leave now. What's the hurry, doctor? Well, don't tell anybody, but I'm running in the third race today. <laughs> don't forget to bet on me to win. Costello, you're not going to be fool enough to bet on the doctor to win, are you? Don't be ridiculous. I'll bet on the show. Uh, <laughs> Abbott, was that guy real or am I dreaming? I know it seems silly, but I'm pinching myself. Oh! Young man, you all are pinching me. I'm not so silly after all. <laughs> Abbott, this girl is beautiful. Allow me to introduce myself to you all. Me all? Yes. Is that all you? <laughs> I have a crazy accent, miss. Are you from the South? Yes, I'm from the solid South. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't tell us your name, miss. But I've got a very odd name. I'm named after a bunch of southern flowers. It's magnolia, violet, jasmine, honeysuckle, swart. <laughs> That's a pretty flower, a swart. <laughs> Are you out here to bet on the horses, miss? You know, my friend Costello here is quite a horseman. Oh, would you, would you all help me load me? You see, I bought this paper, but I don't know much about it. Here, look over my phone. I'm looking. <laughs> Do you see anything that looks good to you? Lady, it all looks good to me, but don't you think we ought to pick out a horse first? <laughs> Costello, she wants you to give her a winner. Yes. If you give Paul a winner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Southern Patterson. We say yow. <laughs> Costello, if you give Paul a little me a winner, right after the race, if you say... Poor little old me to my poor little old heart. And poor little old you can sit with me on a poor little old couch. And poor little old me will put my poor little old arms around poor little old you. And what will poor little old you do? Poor little old me will call up the poor little old electric company and tell them to turn off the poor little old light. <laughs> But before I go, I'm going to give you a southern kiss that'll curl your head. <laughs> Costello. Costello, what's the matter? Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, go home and tell my mother that Kinky won't be home for dinner tonight. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Your horse doesn't run until the last race. Let's, let's make a few bets on the other race. That's a good idea, Rabbit. I'd like to bet $2 on the first race. Okay, I'll take your bet. Give me the money. They're off. You lose. Wait a minute. Whoa! <laughs> what kind of race bet is that? They're off. The race is over. You lose. What kind of race was that? A one step? Come on, run that race over again. Five down. Now on the next race, I want you to double up. 
double up. I ain't even straightened up from the last one. Uh, I mean, I want you to bet $4. $4 for my eye. My eye. That's a good horse. It's a bet. They're off. The race is over. You lose. What is this? Stop walking. Accidents will happen. Maybe the horse got dust in his eye. You know what dust is. Dust is mud with the juice squeezed out. <laughs> now in the next there race. There ain't going to be no next race. But there's only two horses in the next race. Jelly bean and lollipop. You bet on each horse and you can't lose. Hey, that's right. Try to do I bet on each horse I can't lose. Okay, here's $20 on jelly bean and here's $20 on lollipop. Good. The horses are at the post now. They're off. Lollipop is first. Jelly bean is second. Come on, jelly pop. You mean lollipop. I mean jelly pop. I'm betting on a post up. They're on the return. Lollipop first. Jelly bean second. Come on, somebody. They're in the stretch. Lollipop first. Jelly bean second. They're under the wire and the winner. Percy Bar. Ain't that the nut? Now, just a minute. In the last race, that was my last race. But wait a minute, Costello. I don't bring this to a fall. One horse in the last race. One horse, right? Yes. That doesn't sound like one of them race facts, out. But I wouldn't make another bet if there was no horses in the race. But Costello, <laughs> it's your own horse, peanut butter. Peanut butter? Well, that's different. I'm going to bet everything I can on peanut butter. Here, Abbott, put $10 on the nose. Okay, $10 on the nose. Here's another $10, put it on the tail. $10 on the tail. Here's another $10, put it under the saddle. What for? In case you can turn sideways. Uh. <laughs> you can't lose. It's a one-horse race. They're off in a bunch. Off in a bunch! <laughs> Peanut butter. Come on, peanut butter. At the three quarters, it's peanut butter. Come on, peanut butter. Spread, spread out. <laughs> In the stretch, and the winner, peanut butter. Hooray, I win. Give me that money. Just a minute, folks. It's their photo finish. <laughs> a photo finish. One horse in the race. All yes. the just came in for the last race. That wasn't Lollipop. That horse was a ringer. That was Roy Rogers' horse. Roy Rogers' horse? How did you tell? The jockey was beating him with a guitar. <laughs> now, before Abbott and Costello have their final fling, we bring you one more thought on this subject. Next week, be sure to tune in early for our full Wednesday night lineup of shows. Don't miss the Lone Ranger, Lionel Barrymore on Mayor of the Town, and a newcomer to the lineup, Paul Whiteman's On Stage America. Whiteman, who in the past discovered such stars as Bing Crosby, Morton Downey, the Dorsey Brothers, and the host of other show world greats, will give you the opportunity of hearing his latest discoveries, performers who may be tomorrow's big names. Yes, next week, tune in early for the Lone Ranger, Mayor of the Town, On Stage America, and Abbott and Costello. Then tonight and next Wednesday night, stay tuned for the fascinating quiz program which follows next over most of these ABC stations, Go for the House, which is followed by the wonderful Bing Crosby show, guest starring Ethel Merman. Then after Bing, hear the sparkling Star Theater featuring the voices of Gordon McRae and Evelyn Knight. And now back for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello show. <laughs> Costello with a final word. Folks, we want to remind you of the big contest on our Saturday morning Abbott and Costello Kids Show. You can win over $20,000 in prizes, including a $5,000 airplane, a $3,000 automobile, a live baby elephant, a $3,000 house trailer, and thousands of dollars more in big prizes. You can win them all by entering this contest, folks, and at the same time, you'll be doing your part to fight juvenile delinquency. It's really a worthwhile project, folks, so remember to tune in Saturday morning. That's over ABC Saturday morning, the Abbott and Costello Kid Show. You can hear it over most of, most of these same ABC stations. We'll see you Saturday. See you next Wednesday night, too. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody in Patterson. time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Maddie Malnick Orchestra. 
This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. Next, go for the house, the exciting audience participation show that gives studio contestants and listeners to an opportunity to win a brand new honeymoon house and wonderful furnishings. So stay tuned. Go for the house follows in just one moment over most of these same ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.